we get this all the way up. My name is Chris Bowen, and I'm with Microsoft in the Northeast, and I'm a developer evangelist working uh, in the area with companies and customers to talk about development technologies and strategy and platform. And just wanted to uh, come in tonight, and Brian invited me to come in and speak about jQuery and uh, what it can do to help with your web applications and uh, really improving the things that you can do from a usability perspective in the web. And so uh, I have some slides, but I'm really probably not going to use too many of them. I think I'll keep it fairly informal and I want to walk through just kind of the, the reasons you might want to look into this and where you can go and learn more and how this can tie into uh, if you're doing more with the website Spark program you'll have access to tools like Visual Studio and how that will work within that environment as well so be able to use jQuery uh, in, in that environment. So if you want to get in touch with me I'm cbowen at microsoft.com and I also uh, have a blog and have been afflicted by uh, also reading uh, and posting through Twitter quite a lot so it's like having a second inbox uh, work. <laughs> so uh, all those ways you can get in touch with me. And so I'm just going to dive right in and talk about what jQuery is and where we can learn more. And if you have any questions, just uh, use the much around. So um, I'm going to try to not talk to the slides too much. I just want to start from the beginning of web applications and the web experience. So if you're using a website and or you're actually developing a website and you want to make it more um, interesting and more usable for your customers and consumers, uh, there's definitely things you want to think about on the client side. Your goal as a developer or as a web designer should be to really help the user forget that they're on the web and do as much as you can for functionality on the web side kind of removes that, um, I guess, the earlier experiences that we had on the web of a page kind of showing up, going away for a second, coming back, and then you get the next page and you keep on going. Um, that's all very jarring as an experience. And you want to do what you can to improve that. So we can do more on the client side. And we use languages like JavaScript, which is a common language that pretty much all major browsers understand. And we can use that to write functionality on the client side that can respond to user interaction, can automate some reaction, can improve uh, usability and do some animations, things like that. Um, and, and JavaScript's great for that purpose. It helps us do things on the client side in a standard way. The challenge with JavaScript, though, is that it's not always implemented in the same way in different browsers on different platforms in different browser families. And so this has given rise to a set of JavaScript libraries that are out there. And there's, there's plenty out there. Uh, jQuery is one of them, but there are many others that you can look to, and they each have their own strengths. Um, and you can certainly look using more than one if you find one that suits your needs, in addition to uh, maybe looking at jQuery as well. And the idea behind these libraries, and jQuery in particular, is that they take very common things that you might want to do in a web application and make them very simple to do. And not only that, but they take care of all of that uh, busy work of making sure they work consistently in a wide variety of different browsers. So if you bring up your application, uh, your website, you bring it up in Internet Explorer, and it works great, and you go and switch to something else, and maybe an older version of Internet Explorer, and suddenly something is not quite working the way you thought it would. Um, that's really the job of these libraries. They ensure that the things that they offer do work in all the major browsers, and at least the most, most of the recent versions as well. So you can use that with confidence that you don't have to go in yourself and say, if you know version X of this browser, then do that this way. Uh, it really does cut down on a lot of the code that you would ordinarily write. That's why web developers really like these JavaScript libraries. So we at Microsoft have um, really recognized the power, in particular, of jQuery um, as a complement to the things that we offer uh, in our web development platform. So we have things like, um, actually I didn't introduce another concept, a uh, concept of AJAX, which um, pretty much nowadays is just a word, but it used to stand for asynchronous JavaScript and XML. And the idea behind it was we can use this JavaScript stuff on the client side, but also connect with the server and say, we have an update we'd like to do, we'd like to get some information from the server side, but we don't really necessarily want to tear down the entire page and have it all be painted again. That's a very jarring experience and you want to help get rid of those kinds of interactions where you can. So Ajax really sprung into life to help solve those kinds of issues, really connect with the server in a kind of a quiet way and get information back and forth without having to uh, do a lot of stuff to uh, flicker the page or redraw it. Um, so we have an Ajax library that we offer uh, as part of just the, the standard tool set for web developers. 
And it turns out jQuery is a really great complement to that. And I'll talk about why as we go through what jQuery does and um, how it really fits into what we're doing. Uh, if you're familiar with Visual Studio, this is also something that we can talk about, uh, how jQuery works within Visual Studio and how we offer uh, really uh, what's called IntelliSense to help you with working uh, and creating that script. As you're typing it along, Visual Studio will give you hints on what things are offered to you, uh, some descriptions of the various features and what they can do for you. So with that, I'm actually going to jump out of slides. Let's go back into, I want to show you uh, really where jQuery lives. So we start by looking at jQuery.com. This is really the place to go to after this, uh, this presentation if you want to learn more. This is the home for jQuery. And what I really did mention first Jeff, is that this is really an open source library. And it's contributed to by uh, you know, the community of developers that are out there all contributing in different ways to improving and enhancing the features of jQuery. Um, by the way, this was originally created by a gentleman named John Resnick. Uh, graduate of RIT, actually lives now here in the Cambridge area, and I actually believe he's been coming to some of the BizSpark uh, meetups as well that are also held here. Uh, no, sorry, the JavaScript meetups that are that are here. Um, so if you have questions about jQuery, he is in the area. He does speak at various events, and I believe if you're interested, there's a J. Keep saying wrong thing. A JavaScript meetup that meets right here, and you can look that up. I think it's just at meetup.com. The jQuery, Boston jQuery meetup. And I believe he is a, a frequent attendee of that. So you can go and ask him all about your jQuery questions. Uh, but really, one of the key points of jQuery is it's lightweight. It's not something you have to install, it's just another library of JavaScript functions that you would include in your page. And they stream down with all the rest of your content from a page, like pictures and stuff like that. Uh, so nothing to install. And you can go ahead and use this stuff to do things like animations, improve your UI, uh, make communications easier with servers, uh, really a lot of different stuff. And so this is fairly lightweight. Um, there's really not a ton that you need to download. Um, it's, it's actually probably about the size of most of your images that would be on your page. So that shouldn't really be a large concern for you um, if you're not adding a lot of page weight by using jQuery and similar libraries. Uh, what I want to show you is just around this site a little bit, show you what you can do with jQuery and the first thing, of course, you need to download it. And so you can go right here to the convenient download button. I didn't actually select what I wanted. So let me go to um, the, um, oh, in the wrong site. I want to go to the download tab. I'm just going to open this in a new window. And I want to show you the different versions that are available here. If you look down this list, I'm on the download page on the jQuery site. And here's the history of downloads. Hopefully that font size is OK. Uh, and you can see now we're on 1.4.2, and you can look through the history of all the releases that came before it. And before you can work with jQuery, you need to find the version that you, you want to work with, get the current release or past version if you need for some reason, download that to your environment, and then import that to your pages. Once you have that, you can go ahead and start using all the functions that are in jQuery. Uh, I will also point out one thing here. If you look at some of these releases, you'll see that they have a Visual Studio link next to some of them. That's a special file that's included with, um, or alongside the jQuery distributions, that helps Visual Studio understand how to offer you help. So when you're in Visual Studio, is all, I'll show you this in a little bit. Uh, you're coding away, you're creating jQuery and JavaScript code. Uh, Visual Studio will help you out by, by showing you lists of, of methods that you can call, and also the documentation around each of those methods and parameters that are part of that. It really does help you work with the stuff um, in a, an easier way without reaching for you know, a manual or looking to the APIs uh, frequently. Uh, so you want to download all those things. And I have that for uh, the 1.3.2 release, and I'll show you a demo of that in just a little bit. So, um, okay. I think what we'll do is actually just show you a, a quick demo of what this stuff might look like inside Visual Studio, and then we'll come back and take a look at some of the other things that are part of jQuery in terms of the, the plugins that you may have. Uh, they have interest in downloading the UI features, uh, the jQuery UI that offers you some really cool uh, features around customizing the look and feel of your user interface. Uh, again, without doing too much work and without worrying about uh, is it going to work on this browser or that browser or this version. Um, so let's go back to that in just a little while. I'm going to go to Visual Studio and excuse me, close that down. And I'll start this up from scratch here. And I'm in Visual Studio 2008. 
Um, in order to get the IntelliSense, there's just one thing you've got to look up and install. Um, and that's actually documented. I have the, the link for it right here. You can just do a quick search for IntelliSense Visual Studio and jQuery, and you'll find this. And what I'll do is also I'll provide links to, uh, to Brian to help you out with uh, places to go after this if you want to look into this more. Uh, this is a very small change, um, code change to Visual Studio that tells Visual Studio 2008 to look for a certain extension or a certain file name. And if it finds that, it will supply, it will use that for IntelliSense for the, the target JavaScript file. Now this happens to be in reference to jQuery, but it can be for anything, uh, any of your JavaScript files. You can write these for your own files as well. So if you have an internal or some other JavaScript file that you're working with, you can annotate that in a standard way and Visual Studio will, will, will take that documentation and use that for IntelliSense. Uh, be that as it may, uh, that's something you'd install. We'll go back into Visual Studio and show you how to actually work with that. I'm going to make a quick project here. A file new project and a very basic ASP.NET web application. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring those script files into the application and then start using them from within the web page. I'm also buying it a little bit of time to think for some reason. Give it a second here. Don't worry, Bob did find something on the menu, so you're saying. Oh, it's thinking. I, I just angered it probably by doing something at the same time. I can always go to plan B. It's almost done. I can see it. We'll just edit the delay out of any video that we record with. show is, what did I just come back to? Okay, so actually I'll point out um, our relationship with jQuery and why I'm talking about this in terms of Visual Studio. So as of Visual Studio 2008, we were beginning to offer uh, support for that IntelliSense for JavaScript in general, but we're speaking more specifically about really encouraging developers to look at jQuery it does have a nice fit in terms of the functionality that it offers alongside the things that we have. So we have our Ajax library that does interesting things with communicating to servers and calling uh, services, WCF endpoints, JSON, doing a bunch of different things on the web. And jQuery does a bunch of things really well. In particular, one thing that uh, is commonly noted about jQuery is something called selectors. I'm going to demo this in just a little bit. But the idea is, on a web page, and even this page here, uh, your page is composed of a bunch of things, and this is um, structured into um, controls uh, from buttons and uh, things like that to just image, images to also hyperlinks that are on your page. These are all parts of what are called the document object model, the DOM. And frequently what you want to do on the client side is work with various elements in that page. So you want to take parts of the page and do something with it, either respond to something being clicked on, or update contents of something when another event occurs. But on the client side, you need to do that by identifying an element and then really getting reference to that and then working with that element. That can be a bit tricky, uh, especially in some more intermediate scenarios um, where you're trying to select maybe more than one thing. jQuery does this really well. If you've ever heard of, of CSS, uh, Cascading Style Sheets, uh, this really kind of introduced the concept of selecting things by, by name, by a class, um, by, by structure, where it is on your page. And jQuery really takes that concept and applies it in general to selecting elements for use with, jQuery, with uh, JavaScript. And so um, what I could do is say, show me all the images on the page, take all of them, and maybe set some kind of property on them. Uh, or all the hyperlinks on my page, change their fonts, or hide something on the page if it's not useful, maybe the submit button when there's an invalid state on the page. I want to hide that button until we're, we're good to go. Uh, these things are very easy to do with jQuery because you can select them very quickly and then apply some kind of change to it. Now I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, hopefully I've bought this thing enough time or I, I really angered this. Oh, there we go. Wonderful. So let's go ahead and say jQuery app. And I'm going to create a basic web application here. Now this application won't know anything 
about jQuery. So I need to go and tell it about the existence of jQuery by bringing things into the project. And I'll do this pretty quickly. I'm just going to go through and create another directory. And we'll call it scripts. And what I want to do, is I'm going to go and um, open that up. Explorer. I'm going to go to my code files here. Query. What I want to do is just take the files that I have from one version of jQuery, copy them into my project, and you can do this number of ways. I just want to copy them to have a, a local version of them. Oops, well, that's good enough. Let's go ahead and add those in. And they are existing items. So I just want to pull in those scripts to tell Visual Studio about them so I can use them uh, more easily within the project. I'm going to take all of these. Now, why are there three here? Let me show you this. There's three files here for a good reason. Um, the first one really is jQuery. That's the library of functionality that we want to leverage. Um, and that's actually the version that we want to, um, to use at debugging time, at development time, because it has documentation, it has comments, it has white space, and, and things. it's easier to read. The next version is the minified version, .min. And that means it's taken out comments, it's stripped out white space, and extra just stuff that would take up room. So it's an optimized version, so it's going to be uh, Less, to, less uh, bandwidth to download that. It's going to be quicker to download for your customers and just faster to process. But it's not as friendly to read because it's actually one line of text. And so unless you're really good at reading you know, you know, 5,000 character lines of, uh, of code, uh, I think you'll prefer using the first one. And the last one is that IntelliSense document that I was talking about before that describes the functionality that's in jQuery so Visual Studio can use that. I'm going to bring all those in. I'm going to unzoom here. Let's go ahead and need to tell uh, Visual Studio, sorry, we need to tell this page about uh, jQuery. So I can do that by, oh, I never added them. I think I quit. <laughs> Let's go ahead and add those back in again. And actually click Add this time. That would be helpful. OK, so now this page knows nothing about that. And, and this is just HTML right here. And this is what ultimately renders out pages, any page that you're seeing on the web has some composition of HTML, and that's what it looks like with uh, images and buttons and all kinds of stuff. Uh, this page currently has no concept of jQuery. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in. I can just drag and drop that in Visual Studio, and it's going to go ahead and, and set a reference to that. So now this page understands that jQuery exists. It knows that file. And because I applied a little patch, it's going to look for this file with dash vs doc, and it's going to try to use that file to to prime uh, the IntelliSense uh, within the, the Visual Studio environment. So now I can go through and I can say things like this. So go ahead and write some scripts. We'll say type. Oops. By the way, I get IntelliSense for general JavaScript within Visual Studio as well. Um, so that's pretty helpful. I can go ahead and start just typing, um, start writing some, some code here. So this is, this is going to be um, actual JavaScript. It's nothing to do with jQuery just yet. And I can say you know, process. And write some code here. And then you'll get IntelliSense for just anything you want to do within, uh, you know, within uh, Jake JavaScript right here. And it's, it's pretty smart about what it does. It knows the kinds of types of things that I'm working with. The IntelliSense adjusts, and it knows that, for example, this X is actually a numeric type. And it recognized that and offered me the IntelliSense for that. But that's not jQuery. So let me show you what it actually looks like. And I have nothing on my page right now, so there's really nothing to do with jQuery. Uh, so I'll go back and add some content here in just a moment. But I wanted to show you what it might look like. Um, I begin by opening things up. Is that font OK, everyone? Can you see that? OK. Um, what, it's, what I'm doing is saying dollar sign open paren is actually a shortcut for jQuery. And it's saying I'm about to write, in this case, a selector. The selector, if you might recall, is what I said is how you choose things on your page. So I'm going to choose a subset, maybe the, the controls on the page, and then work with them. And this is pretty straightforward to do. Um, it literally will take you maybe just a, a half hour or so to sit down and try out different selectors to get the main ones, uh, to understand the main ones, and to really be productive with those. Um, but it's pretty powerful. So I can say, you know, give me every element on this page, and that's just a wild card. And then you hit dot. The nice thing about this is what's happening with jQuery, that first expression says, OK, I'm going to find the things that you identified, in this case, every single element on the page. And then I'm going to return that as a set of matched elements. 
What's really nice about this is it feeds that down to the next thing that you're going to do. In this case, I can say uh, dot whatever I want to do. You can go through and um, some of these are jQuery, some of these are just uh, JavaScript functions that you might want to do, but I'm going to show you all of them here. You go through the list and you can say, oh, I want to do you know, various things. I don't have anything on the page right now, so um, this really won't do too much. But uh, I can do things like uh, a slide toggle. It's always a fan favorite here. Um, and as I do that, I get into all sense as I go even farther into that. So this is really powerful stuff because I can quickly choose the things I need and then actually act upon them. And I don't want to give you too much information too quickly, but um, I'll, I'll say one more thing on this and then we'll, we'll move on. I can keep adding dots to this expression. So I can do one thing and I can hit another dot because each thing I do in jQuery returns the set of things that it operated on. So I get all the images on the page, I can set a property, then when I say dot after that, all the same images that were worked on will be fed into the next thing that I'm doing, which means I could hide them, whatever I want to do, or uh, whatever you feel like. And you can add to or change that set of elements as you go down uh, that, that pipe of operations. So very, very powerful. You can do a lot of stuff with one line of code in jQuery. So it's um, very, very powerful stuff. So I'm gonna, let's leave this like that. Maybe I'll call this in a little while. And um, I'm going to go and add some content down here. I'm actually just going to do it really quickly. Let's just use some HTML controls and then put them on the page. I can do that uh, either by adding it right to the content of the page, uh, the, the source code right here, or I can just do it in the, the design view right down here. I'll just add a few random things. I probably will make Brian cry by uh, my horrible UI design here, but let's just keep adding stuff until. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I'm just kidding. All kill. Yeah. So here we go. I'll add some radio buttons. This is awesome stuff, folks. There we go. Um, I don't know. An image without an image in it. Uh, what else do we want? This is all good. Oh, and hello. Okay. So <laughs> this is all well and good. I've got all the content up here. And if I if I ran the page, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to show me this content. Uh, it's asking me if I want to turn on debugging, which I do. Now I've got a page that's running. Um, I've got a jQuery expression in there, but I haven't activated it. I'm not calling it by anything on the page. And I've got this lovely UI now, which maybe I want to do something with. Submit, buttons, checkboxes, radios, all kinds of great fun stuff. Um, but to invoke this, I have a lot of different options. Um, one thing you can do, and, and probably like the older way of doing things, is to actually do what I just did. And to have a function up here and yeah, call it from something and say, when I click on this, call this. Um, this, is, this is a traditional way of doing things, but it turns out there are less obtrusive ways of, of writing your code. There's a, a method called uh, unobtrusive JavaScript, and it's all about kind of taking the code out of your, your markup and helping to make that markup clean while, other, while the actions that you're performing are, are somewhere else. You can maintain both individually. Um, but I'm going to keep that because I'm going to be lazy. So let's go ahead and call that maybe from the button down here. And I'll just say on click, we'll call, I think I called it process. That should be good enough. And so what I can do now is run the page again. And what did I do? I think I just toggled everything. So I think when I cl click this, everything goes away. So I know that's really good functionality. That's exactly what you want to do on your websites. But uh, <laughs> that was pretty easy to do. The, the event fired. I, I called that JavaScript function, which in turn, invoke jQuery, and everything went away. <laughs> Which, you know, maybe you want to do that for a submit button when the order is not ready to go, or something like that. But all you really have to do is just this little amount of code. And that, by the way, I can, I can specify things like this. I can say, uh, only do, um, this is a little bit more about selector syntax. I can do things like this. Find something named uh, this, uh, you know, name one. Find anything that has that name. And if we find that element, or more than one element, match that, and then perform that operation. I could do things like this, find things like required. This is actually a very common thing to do. Um, Saying, go, go and find everything on my page that's a required field. And then maybe apply some kind of styling to that. Uh, put, put a red, uh, make it red, or some kind of background color to really enforce to the user uh, to, that it's a required field. Um, that's a very common thing to do. You can also select things uh, by uh, things like this, I can say only do, um, let's just say buttons. 
So find all the buttons on my page and then toggle them. So let me run this again. And when I click this button, only the thing that was a button is going to go away. Okay, did you catch what that difference was? The selector only picked that one element and then executed the slide toggle on that. So that's pretty cool. Um, now obviously this is the most simple thing I could possibly show. Uh, the more complex samples really do save you a lot of code and a lot of a lot of hassle of having to worry about you know um, is this going to be on one browser or another and uh, maybe the version prior or the latest version. That's what jQuery is really good at, at taking care of. They have lots of regression tests to ensure that the functionality they offer continues to work as uh, browsers change. So one less thing that we have to worry about as, as web designers and web developers. Very nice stuff. So um, now I was showing you kind of uh, what I think is more of a hassle way of, of testing stuff, of writing it, hitting run, and then finding out what it does. Um, what I want to show you is a different thing that you might want to try. So um, I run the page here. Oops, it's yelling at me or something. I don't know what that was. Let's close that one down and try not to anger it again. Okay. I'll give that a second, I guess. I have angered this twice now. It's not a good thing. Okay, I think it's all set. Let's go ahead and run this. And so now I was saying, change the code, run it, see what it does. Change the code, run it, see what it does. It's actually a pretty slow way of, of learning how to work with jQuery. I recommend that you um, become familiar with the tools that are built in. If you have Internet Explorer 8, you have tools already at your disposal. If you're working with Firefox, uh, a very common thing to recommend is something called Firebug uh, that works within Firefox. In IE 8, I can hit F12, and this will bring up some tools for me uh, within IE, and I can begin to use this. I'm only showing you this very briefly to point out one particular thing. If you go into script and look at this console on the right-hand side, it might be kind of small, so let me zoom in on this. Uh, there's a console where it lets you just run arbitrary code against the web page. So I could use this to try out different selectors and just write various jQuery expressions here. So put in a selector, um, in our case, um, whatever, we'll say, um, so, yeah, whoa, I'm yelling at everyone. We'll say selected, and then we'll say the same thing. We'll slide toggle it again, because I like that so much. Actually, I'm going to go select a couple of things. Actually, I'll just select one thing. <laughs> Sorry about the zoom. <laughs> uh, I'm going to run that, and now you see it executed that. And up here, oh, I didn't do the right thing. It selected actually a, a colon selection. Uh, I guess I got the wrong one there. Checked. That's what I want. Let me try that. run that again. This is why I want to show it to you. I would have to run this again. There we go. So that thing that I had chosen went away because jQuery was smart enough to say, go through everything on your page, find anything that has currently been selected, and then act upon that. In our case, hide it. Um, so think about extending that. You can combine these things. You can say, find required fields that are selected or that maybe have no content in them currently. Do something with them. And again, that's going to be very consistent across browsers and, and just to work as you expect. And what I really wanted to get across here with this is that this tool is going to help you just try different things without having to rerun an application. In fact, what's nice is you can try this against any page you want. So if you have a site that's already up there, you want to kind of work with that, um, it's only a client side change. It's nothing that's uh, new. This is just taking what your browser sees and, and working with it. It's not you know going back to the server and, and making you know, changes up there. So um, again, this is a good way to really just figure out how to work with various things and then what different jQuery functionality uh, would do what. So again, uh, IE Dev Tools, IE 8, and then uh, Firebug in Firefox as well. So any questions so far? Uh, are we gone? Thank you. Well, what's the syntax? Uh, Sorry? The colon. Oh, what, that's a good question. This, this is um, which you can't see. It's so small right now. Uh, that's the selector syntax. It's actually uh, based off a W3 standard. Uh, so, and it's just general selector syntax. I, I'm not sure if jQuery added more to that or if it's uh, exactly that syntax. Uh, I, I don't think I want to guess on that one, but uh, I know it, it offers essentially the same kind of selector syntax that cascading style sheets offer for selecting elements by name or class or by hierarchy. 
And um, in fact, it offers functionality around CSS3, which uh, I think most browsers don't even support yet. So we get to use that within jQuery uh, as selector power, um, even though that's you know, still to come. So um, that's, that's what I'm doing when I open up the, the paren and start typing in something within, within those, those quotes there. And it can get very, very powerful. I can say things like, let me zoom in and show you what I mean here. In fact, let me go to my blog and just have a better page to, to work with. Um, let's go to my blog and I'll, I'll play with this locally here. So um, pick, a, pick a post, whatever. Okay, let's go into a page here. And um, what I can do is I can use these tools to, to work with that page. I can write jQuery against this stuff. So I can say, you know, find all the images on my page and we'll stick with what we have. Slide toggle. <laughs> you, know, you can do much more than toggling things in jQuery, but I'm going to keep it very simple. Um, so I can run that script and, oops, something completely wrong. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't put jQuery on my page for this one. So that's actually an important thing. Uh, because this page doesn't have the script for jQuery, I can't invoke that against just an arbitrary page. There's nothing to run that against. There are some tools that will help you to do that. Um, I'm going to draw a blank on the name. I, I, I have heard of something that will let you just take one of your pages and, and wrap that with jQuery or, and, and then be able to write that kind of stuff. But I'm drawing a blank on the name. Uh, Brian happens to know it. But, um, but you know, I can't do that here, although I could run just any arbitrary script uh, within this and it would execute. Um, so there it goes. Good idea gone bad. All right. So we'll just ignore that and go away. What I could do though is be very specific about things. I can say, give me a selector that finds maybe bulleted items that are within uh, a parent that is uh, a header tag level two. Very, very powerful stuff that if you had to write yourself, it would take a lot of JavaScript. And to do that consistently across browsers, again, adds to more of that JavaScript you have to write. So this is really cool stuff, and you can get very, very specific. So I can say things like, I've got an image, i got, sorry, an alt tag right here, which is just a hyperlink, and maybe I want to only pick uh, the ones that are within the second region on my page, just to be arbitrary. You know, pick these, and then change those, uh, you know, to open in a new browser. I can do that, and I can do that with one expression as a, a jQuery or into JavaScript call. So pretty cool stuff, very, very powerful. And that's really a lot of the reason why we are encouraging developers to take a look at that and to really just understand because it's another tool that you uh, can use to make your life easier. And that's really what we, <laughs> we should all get around that, right? <laughs> um, anything that makes your life easier is a good thing, right? So um, that's really what I want to show you with that for now. Let's go back to the jQuery site and show you a bit more of what we can do with that. <laughs> it's still thinking about something here. Yeah, I'll close that down. Now back on jQuery.com, uh, you can go to some other um, parts of the site. One thing that's really important to, to look at is the plugins part of the site. jQuery not only has a lot of stuff in its core that's powerful, but it was also written to be extensible. So you can add in your own functionality to jQuery um, to do something that you need, do something that isn't quite addressed in the core. Turns out there's a whole lot of people that like that and are doing that as well. So the first thing you should do before, um, if you look at jQuery and it's not quite doing something that you want, Chances are pretty good it's a plugin that might do something pretty close to what you're looking for. So you should go to the plugins page and take a look because there's hundreds of plugins that will work all in that same way. You select something, you say dot do this, and that functionality will, will just you know, take care of, of that uh, be happening right there based on your selector. So things from navigation to creating tables and just general utilities, even support for things like drag and drop, um, all kinds of various things. So, I really do recommend that you take a look through these. Probably the easier thing to do is to look at people's posts around like top X plugins. There's a bunch of those out there, like top 10, top 20 uh, jQuery plugins. Because uh, to look through each of these individually, you know, that's probably a bit daunting at first. And uh, you know, you look 223 plugins for uh, for Ajax. Uh, you know, it might take a bit of time to go through and, that, and analyze each one. So anyhow, download these. You can just grab you know whatever is going to be interesting for you. Run that, and it's, it's again more code that you don't have to write. The next thing is in that same vein. If you click on the UI tab at the top there, you're going to go to something called jQuery user interface or jQuery UI. And this has some really powerful stuff around uh, customizing and theming your interface on a web application. So, to show you that, 
we'll start here. I'm going to click on this first option here around applying effects uh, beyond just slide toggle to your application. And so I can do things like, um, this is a pretty small font, but I'm going to click on this as sortable. We'll go into here, and each of these items is an, a, a plugin for jQuery's core that can do functionality that's pretty common on websites. So in this case, sortable. And so I can do things like this. I can um, you know, drag items up and down a list and just have them stick in the list um, without really running a lot of code. You can look down here to find out how it was done. The overview of how it was done, options, methods, view the source for it right there. And you'll see it's actually <laughs> not that much code. So right here. So this went out and found something named sortable and it applied the sortable method to that jQuery uh, plugin. And then uh, it went ahead and said disable selection as well uh, to really to initialize that. So that's as simple as it gets. Right? You activate it, you pick the things you want to act on, you enable the plugin or, or activate some kind of jQuery core functionality, and that's it. So there's plenty of other examples like that. Um, back up and show you. Oops. Go back one more. There we go. Let's be having network isms. So dragging and dropping, resizing things, accordions, uh, picking dates, dialogues, tabs, all kinds of stuff, built-in progress bars. Each of these are things that are part of jQuery UI. That's just, again, another JS file that you would grab and, and put as part of your project, just like I did with the jQuery stuff. Uh, also effect methods, so being able to do um, things like color animations. Ooh. Yes, there's some issues on the site right now. Okay. There's not, well, that wasn't me. That was server, I think. So hopefully there is there is anger on my machine. Don't get me wrong. But, uh, maybe it's being transferred. Okay. So effects. Um, oh, let's try bouncing. Run the effect. There we go. Maybe if you want to call out something on your page, draw the user's attention to that. Uh, the code for that. I bet you it's one line. So let's see. We have to set. Where is our thing? There we go. Oh, run effect. So I got to find that. Oh, it's a bit more to it, but it's not too much code here. Sure. You're basically picking an effect and making that happen when they click the button. Um, I, I don't want to go through all the code on this one because it's a bit more of an involved example. Uh, but it all works the same way. Um, that font is really, really small. So. Um, but one thing I want to point out, though, is something I didn't mention just yet. This code right here will take something that you selected and add an event to it. So I can say, select, uh, in this case, a button, and then add something to react to the user doing something on the page. In this case, it's going to be a click event. So when anyone clicks the thing that I've selected, go and do the following stuff. Run the effect, and then, and then uh, cancel out. So that's going to result in calling the effect, bouncing it up and down, and I can apply that by just changing the selector to choose other things on that page. A hyperlink, uh, a table, something like that. And, and that effect will, will be selected and applied um, because it will be a click function that's attached to that. So that's a pretty easy way to assign events to any arbitrary elements on your page. There's also something new, uh, fairly new, within the last uh, couple of releases um, of jQuery, something called live events. And live events let you um, create events that will just watch for things happening in aggregate. So it says they live, think at the higher level, and they're just kind of watching, seeing what things bubble up to them. And it's going to say things like, if I, if I see a click event bubble up to me, then I'll take a look at it, and if it's the thing I'm interested in, I'll do something in reaction to that. So it's another way to write, uh, to, to write methods against things, uh, particularly in a, in a dynamic way. So if, if a button came into life, after the page was originally created, which is entirely possible, uh, that kind of an event would be would capture that uh, that element, um, or or things like an update panel. If you're familiar with AJAX, may bring back a new element into the, the page, which wouldn't necessarily have a click event on it. So it would be clicked, and that event would be captured by the live event. It's probably a lot of information for an introduction to jQuery, but just give you an idea of the various things that you can pull together to accomplish a variety of different effects. Uh, in jQuery. So let's get out of here. And I want to show you the second part of jQuery UI. Which actually, let's go back to the UI homepage. 
And it's this stuff right here. It's a theming framework. So you can go through, and there's a sample bunch of, of controls here. And it's showing you the effect of applying various themes to uh, those controls. And what's actually pretty cool is to go to the gallery and just choose uh, different themes and to see the effect that it has over on the right-hand side just by applying that theme. And it's really not a lot of code that you're doing, uh, you know, changing everything to green with uh, nice shading. And you can see the effect on all the various kinds of controls uh, in your site. And you can download that. Just say, download. Uh, you can also compose um, your own theme with the role your own. You can go through and say, you know, corner radiuses, let's, I don't know, let's ratchet that up to 20. Say OK. And then just change things as you wish down down the list, so highlighting colors, whatever you want, uh, whatever. Change it to a random thing. And then when you're done, you just download the theme. Click that, download it, and there's instructions for how to incorporate that into your own site design. Um, again, using the jQuery uh, core functionality to attach those things to the user interface that you have. Uh, very, very powerful stuff, and again, that's just part of the jQuery UI. Okay, any questions on, on that stuff, jQuery UI? Yeah, I'll take a quick look at time here. All right. Um, all right. Good. Yeah, it's, it's very, very powerful stuff. That's why there's really a lot of fans out there, a lot of people using this. And I, I think a lot of the reason why um, you we're really taking a, a look at that and encouraging developers to, uh, to take a look at jQuery as well. I'll mention that Microsoft's great relation is really to just take jQuery uh, as is. We're not changing it in any way. We're just being another redistribution point for it. Uh, for jQuery. So when you install like Visual Studio 2010, uh, we're just taking the as-is version of jQuery and incorporating that so you'll have it locally. Uh, new projects will just have that available, um, but it's not anything that's different than exactly from what you get by going here. Uh, question, yeah. basic question. So that means jQuery is not the, the Microsoft product? That's exactly. I'm sorry if I made that, uh, if I kind of presented it that way. It's a totally open source, separate from <laughs> us. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So it's totally just a separate thing. Uh, it happens to do some things you know, really well. Of Java, but no. no, this this is by the community, um, maintained, uh, you know, by, on the site. You know, people can upload uh, plugins. In fact, we're contributing to it too, but we definitely don't own it. We're not trying to own it. We're just you know okay. being part of the community uh, to uh, kind of raise awareness of it, and, and because it does a lot of things really well that ties in well with what we have. Uh, we're making that just something that we encourage people to take a look at. I'm sorry if I gave that impression that it was something that was a Microsoft thing, because it clearly is not. Absolutely not. So, um, but we do um, make it easier for you to get that as part of your web projects if you are in Visual Studio going forward. Um, but again, um, you know, it's a whole, a whole community of stuff that you can grab and pull this in. It has nothing to do with ASP.NET. It's just that it works really well with what we have. So if you have any other site out there, uh, just straight HTML or whatever you have, jQuery is, is going to work in that environment as well. Um, so really, it's, it's definitely one of those things that's worth looking into and understanding uh, what it can do. Because it just, again, makes your life easier uh, from both functionality and also from that cross-platform, uh, sorry, cross-browser uh, compatibility perspective. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, one question. It says uh, jQuery is a new kind of JavaScript library. So that means the jQuery is not the you know sort of script language. It's actually the it's a library. That's that's right. So okay. jQuery itself is not a language. Uh, JavaScript is the language okay. that, that's all the major browsers understand uh -huh. that for language. Uh -huh. It's just that um, oftentimes JavaScript can be kind of verbose to do common things. Uh -huh. uh, and different browsers have different ways of doing different things. And so there are libraries like jQuery, there's other ones as well, Scriptaculous, Dojo, the list goes on. Mm -hmm. And each of those seeks to make seeks to make uh, writing jQuery, JavaScript easier for you. So all of this stuff, jQuery, other libraries, are just um, sets of JavaScript mm -hmm. that you don't have to write. And again, it's not anything you have to install, it's not a plugin or anything like that. Uh, they're just straight scripts files that are part of your project, just like anything else would be, mm -hmm. like uh, a picture or something like that, a resource like that. And the, the browser is what downloads that and is able to run that because the browser has an understanding of JavaScript. Yeah. 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 All right. More questions now?
I think we've gone as, about as, as deep as I'd like to go with this. Um, I'll point out a couple resources that uh, might be useful. Um, if you read Scott Guthrie's blog, um, he's, uh, he runs a lot of the development groups at Microsoft. He, he talks through about VA support for it in Visual Studio. So as part of the website Spark program, you know, getting Visual Studio is part of that. And um, you want to be able to understand that jQuery IntelliSense is supported by this change. And then he, he talks about a bunch of things about how you might want to use it, how it works with Ajax, and he actually recommends uh, this jQuery in Action book, which I think is very good too. Uh, they have some good samples that they post as well online. So the book is recommended. I think they're working on a second version as well. Um, I'm not sure when it's coming out, but let's take a look at that. Um, but just in general, go to jQuery.com, and there's plenty of documentation here. You can go through, and if you're wondering how selectors work, just go here. And there's a lot of stuff I didn't talk about. I didn't really want to overwhelm you with the initial content here. Um, but you can find just all these different approaches for choosing things um, from simple to very complex uh, organizations of, of elements on your page and get very specific. And some of these things really save you just an amazing amount of code. So I recommend just take an evening, uh, you know, sit by the fire, or open up jQuery, and, uh, and try these things out on a page that you have and say, how would I pick the third row of this table um, you know, using an expression in jQuery? Uh, what could I do with that once I selected that? How do I pick all of the, the images on a page? You can do things like, show me all the images on my page that don't have a, an alt tag associated with them. So if you want to make sure your site's clean and, and good to go with having alt tags for accessibility. Those are the kinds of things that are very straightforward to do with selector syntax um, in jQuery. So uh, again, go through all that. There's um, plenty of tutorials. There's cheat sheets out there. If you want to just do a quick search for that, you'll, you'll find some nicely formatted um, one-page shortcuts for all the various things that jQuery uh, can do from selectors to other functionality, uh, including effects and Ajax and those various things that it can do. Uh, with that, I think it's probably enough. Any other questions to, uh, to summarize? OK, well, if you have any questions, um, let me know. I, I'll leave my, my contact up here, uh, cbo on microsoft.com, uh, and then just through my blog as well. Uh, I'll give I'll give Brian a bunch of the uh, the content for today, links and some useful guides for you. And uh, thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.